know that a lot of them do try to avoid, they're like, oh, should we do it, should we not? Well, you know what, if you do want to have a big sign that says, uh, don't go in the water, we'll deal with it when we come to uh, post-production. It'll be fine. So, you know, we don't, uh, we don't say, don't write anything in English ever, no. That's not a rule, it's not, we don't ask for that. If it's there, we'll just deal with it. The, the point of that question was, I think animation, you have to consider an international market just to increase the profitability. Um, next uh, guest, Mike Valaket. He um, he's created an organization called Canadian Animation Resources. And uh, briefly, uh, Mike, if you could just explain to the, the people here, what is Canadian Animation Resources? Sure. Uh, show of hands, who's sort of it? That's pretty good. Okay, actually. Um, a number of years ago, I was working as a recruiter in the animation industry. Um, and uh, I had nowhere to post jobs. It's pretty simple. Um, AWN provides the service that it does, but as a Canadian producer, you're often forced to, uh, you know, you can only hire from within the province for the tax credit uh, situations. And I would post a job there for 200 bucks for a month. And um, get, and no matter how specific, specific you want to be, Ontario residents only, New Brunswick residents only, I'd spend three days waiting through 200 resumes from everywhere but place I could hire from. You know, they find two that I could even look at. Um, so there was a, a hole in the industry. And, um, you know, we are this huge, physically vast country with pockets of production all over the place. And, uh, and a varied community as well. We've got our NFB-oriented community. We've got the industry side. Um, gaming is growing. And then we've got this other sort of hybrid independent sector. Um, and there was no one place to go online to access that. So what we try to provide is one central online resource for you guys, for everybody, even if you're a fan of animation. Um, we keep it pretty personal. We don't want to become a big ungainly monster. Um, I write on it every day. I basically share whatever I find that I find is relevant to the animation community. I've got a couple other contributors. We have the up-to-date job board in the country. Uh, job posts are free. All services on the site are free. Um, we do raise a little bit of money through advertising and through just sort of Sponsorship, you can PayPal tap, you can hit if you want to contribute and help out a little bit. Um, it's becoming a full time job for me. Uh, it doesn't pay the bills at this stage, but it's something that I'm doing, uh, I, I do. Uh, I work in production as well, I do a few independent things, but really it's about creating that one place where all you guys can go and find out whatever it is you need. Um, I work closely with the Ottawa, Ottawa International Animation Festival, there's an online directory there that we, uh, we work with them to help promote and to create a place where people can go when they're looking for talent in Canada. Um, I run a showcase page if you've got a film. If I, sign, if I find a film that I think needs to be seen, I pop it up there. Um, we do profiles on independent animators, on directors. Jessica Redstone used to be an auto animator. We used to got the gig redesigning. All the movies for these characters. For Warner Brothers, she works out of Ottawa three days a week. Um, I've been doing an interview with her for the last three months, and I barely caught it at the time when I was thinking of live, and everybody was posting their interviews with her, and all this backlash because, oh my god, you changed one's money. Um, but this is where you can go to find this stuff. If you read Cartoon Brew, if you read Cold Heart Flash, if you read AWN, you need to add kind of animation resources to that list. This is where you're going to find the information. Great. Uh, sounds like a worthwhile resource. And if you're in the animation industry, at some point or other, you're going to always be looking for work. Film business in general. And games. And games, yeah. Um, Joseph Gillen. Uh, if you check out uh, his biography, you're going to find a variety of interesting endeavors. Uh, one of them is a uh, designer of tattoos. You can show one, one a little bit there. <laughs> the other thing is he's been a fashion model, runway model. Been, uh, <laughs> listen, in the alleys of Montreal, he looks great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's a writer. He's just released uh, a very highly regarded textbook on special effects for uh, animation. He's in the process of writing another one. Um, he's also a musician. Now, the point of me writing all of these things out for you is, my question is, do you find, that as, as an animator, do you find that all of these other aspects add to your abilities as an animator? Um, 
Yeah, I would, I would have to say the answer is yes. Um, I, um, one thing I find about animation, and, and I find in almost every anim animation studio I go into, you find a lot of really diversity, a lot of, a lot of diverse artistic talents. It's easy to get a band together in an animation studio because there's always a lot of uh, musicians. Um, and for me, one of the reasons that it's really essential is because animation is a, is a very work-intensive, laborious process. It takes a great deal of patience. Um, if you're working on a feature film, you might go two years before actually, three years before actually seeing a final result, you know, everything finished and in place. Uh, same as working on television shows. You work on each series, it goes out the door, you might not actually see it for a really long time, so the feedback loop is really slow, and I find that being able to pick up a guitar and play some music, and it's kind of instant results, instant gratification, and, and I use it to keep from going insane, <laughs> in a way. And also, when you study music, or if you study painting, or uh, I don't know about modeling, because I did that very little, you must have dug really deep to find out. But um, all he had to do was look at those eyes. Yeah. <laughs> with, um, with music also, I find you learn a lot because composition and pacing and timing. Um, as, a, as a songwriter, I learned a lot about storytelling. Um, it's also very important to learn about especially timing and the spaces in between the notes, which is very important in animation to know when not to have everything in the when to slow things down and change the pace. And music is very much like that. And I find they do feed off of each other. And uh, everything that I do, whether it's underwater photography, which is something I'm, I'm really involved in as well, and, and uh, um, I, like in my workshop, I talk a lot about um, as, as an effects animator, being studying light, studying everything, studying the elements, studying uh, everything I see. I mean, the whole reality experience is a special effect. Everything I see every day is a special effect, and I try to make that point so long. Um, you know, I think anything you can do outside of animation that doesn't get in the way, that doesn't you know distract you to the point of not being able to get your job done, is a, is a great benefit. Variety of interests is, is fantastic and healthy and helpful. I've noticed that mm -hmm. in any animation studio I worked in, you could get a band. Like, oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. At, 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 at Disney, we actually had so many people who wanted to be in the band. We ended up with two drummers and five guitar players and like seven singing girls and, you know, <laughs> four, five horn players. I mean, we had this huge band and we played the Christmas party every year. It was fantastic. And they were so diverse that we could play Aerosmith and Michael Jackson and, you know, Casey and the Sunshine Band. I mean, we could play all this, this really broad variety of styles, you know, as well. I remember Jane and Clive Smith who went on to form Nelvana. Mm -hmm. We were at a place called Sonera. Um, but a, a, wide, a wide culture tends to be more helpful than humans, I would say. Um, That's oh. a quick you call yourself an animator first, or is, is animation means to an end for these other for the rest of your life, or are you an animator first? I definitely an animator first. Yeah, 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 it's, it's yeah really absolutely. I wanted to be a musician first, okay. but I discovered animation came a lot more naturally. I can work at music a lot more. It's, it's really my calling, and I can't deny it. And, and I love it, and it's always come first. Uh, within the, the industry right now, you're all hearing talk about a recession. I don't know about you folks, but I, I've been through many recessions. You kind of just roll with it, I guess. But are you finding the, uh, the current lack of funding to be a, have a profound effect on the animation industry right now? Would you have any views? Actually, everybody that I know is in animation right now is working. The problem that we have in LA is that 
shows are going to London, or right now, a whole bunch of stuff is going to Vancouver. So Pixar just opened up an office there. Uh, the Mill, MPC, like a whole bunch of different companies are opening up offices in Vancouver right now. That you know, so that affects our business in LA. So some of my friends have gone to Vancouver because that's where the work is. So they're working, which is good. And I, I mean, actually, for us, a few years ago it was worse because we had the writers' strike, then we had the threat of the actors' strike. So a lot of movies were not greenlit. Um, another thing that we're fighting in the industry is just more work, less time, less money. You know, that makes it very stressful for people. Anyone else finding the, uh, the current economic? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't mind jumping in a little bit. I, I tend to um, just uh, make a point of not, I, I tend not to use the word recession myself. I find that in today's, today's world where we have communication technology that we do, um, for the young, younger people in the industry who haven't been through the uh, downturns, the, which is and it's a, it's a very cyclical industry. You know, I mean, anybody who's been in it for more than five or six years has been through at least one downturn. Um, recession tends to be a very sort of um, exciting word uh, in, in, in the wrong sense of things. Um, downturns lead back, like, lead back to upswings. Um, we're seeing right now the, the industry's been through a really a big one over the last couple of years. Um, Ontario seems to have weathered it at this point. It's bouncing back. Uh, there's a lot of work in Toronto. Ottawa's done okay. 